Right now on Robin Hood Radio, it is time for Cover Your Assets with Jim Lynch. Jim, of course, joins us on a Tuesday morning. Uh, he uh, is an independent voice on Wall Street, the economy, politics, sports, brings many years of experience to a lot of different topics, a true entrepreneurial spirit. Here's Jim Lynch. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Marshall. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing lousy, and I'll tell you why. Um, I... I watched uh, some news this week, of course, with uh, what's going on, and I feel terrible for uh, the people of the Ukraine for uh, what they're going through and being invaded by their neighbor. And basically, uh, even though they're two different countries at one time, they were all under the USSR, uh, this is almost like a a civil war uh, where uh, it's Russians killing Russians, uh, even though now they're Ukrainians. Uh, And... I saw images on the BBC and on CNN that were striking and sad. And those are the images of uh, the citizens of the Ukraine uh, that are dying uh, in this war. But also pictures and videos of the soldiers and on both sides, the soldiers from the Ukraine and the soldiers from Russia, Belarus, wherever. And the thing that hit me is these soldiers are all 19 and 20-year-olds. And it just brought me back to seeing the 19 and 20-year-olds, American soldiers who died in Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, And this is a horrible, horrible thing affecting everybody except for one person, uh, and 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 that is uh, Putin. Um, I, I it's it's just a tragedy that's beyond comprehension. Um, that didn't have to happen. I mean, yeah, we were invited into Iraq originally to to, to help. Uh, uh, you know, when Iraq evaded uh, the neighboring country, uh, and uh, and we were uh, we went into Afghanistan to get Bin Laden. Uh, this is something totally different, and I don't, I don't know, Jim. It, uh, it not only affects the lives and the future lives and generations of uh, Russians and uh, Ukrainians uh, in the future uh, families, but this really is encompassing the whole world, and it's encompassing the whole world at a time where the world has enough going on that this, this is just a terrible tinder point. Incredible, isn't it? Um, you mentioned these images on television. It's amazing. Uh, this Ukraine situation has taken up so much space in our media, in our communications, that the pandemic uh, is there somewhere, but you don't really get much information about it. And the startling thing is we went from this one very dramatic uh, kind of frightening situation with the uh, p- pandemic, with the uh, Omicron and so forth. And now all of a sudden we're in another one, a different one, uh, which uh, also uh, has the possibility of impacting negatively thousands and thousands of people, uh, not only in Ukraine and Russia, but if this gets out of hand, uh, which I don't think it will, uh, it uh, it'll be it'll be a pox on on just about every country in the world, and, and certainly in Europe. Um, on a positive note, if there is a positive note, the Chinese, when this situation went to the UN for a vote. Uh, they didn't vote no, as Russia did. Rather, they abstained. And there's a thought going around that the Chinese are not exactly pleased with what uh, Putin has been doing, namely killing innocent civilians uh, who haven't done anything other than get up in the morning and go to work. So I'm hopeful that maybe uh, the Chinese... Uh, Head might just begin whispering in Putin's ear. You know, we uh, 
we gave you an order for a lot of uh, corn a week or so ago, but uh, we didn't expect you to be feeding a lot of fighters with it. Um, it's so, so ironic how this has just turned things upside down. You know, you know, it's been Putin's idea to try and break up NATO, and he had Trump on his side for a while. And now what he's done, he's made NATO even stronger, and probably two additional people will want to become part of it. You know, you're right. Fa- you're, you're, you're right there, Jim. Not only has NATO become stronger, people were saying uh, uh, that NATO was outdated. Well, guess what? It's not. <laughs> it's not. NATO, NATO is, is, is something that is going to keep uh, Europe uh, secure. Well, that's the sad part of this is NATO was created after the Second World War because we didn't want to go through another war, and we felt if we were allied uh, and strong, then, uh, you know, people would think twice before starting to fight. Well, along came Putin, and he's had this dream, apparently, of going back uh, before 1991, when uh, the Russian regime uh, collapsed. Uh, and he is apparently trying uh, to reconstitute uh, that particular federation. Now, that's actually pretty impossible based on uh, the fact that uh, seven countries that reign Russia uh, are now NATO people. So if he starts fussing with them, then NATO will start going in uh, on the ground, in the air, and by ship. Um, But I'm afraid, (laughs) I I hope I'm wrong, I hope... uh, Putin has just miscalculated, but from experts who followed him for years and years, his speeches and his demeanor and so forth, uh, and even apparently from a few people in the Russian government uh, whose names are not known, uh, there's whispers that, you know, this man might have lost it, and uh, he might have just decided he was going to go for broke uh, in, in a crazy, crazy way. Uh, because there's no way he's going to get what he wanted. But what he will get, possibly, is uh, the seeds of a revolution in Russia. The Russian people do not... Who 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 would want war anyway? But the Russian people do not want war. They've been out in the street saying no. Uh, Ukrainian Russians have also, the citizens have been yelling and screaming at the Russian soldiers as they've come in. And finally, we have had a number of uh, Russian soldiers uh, give up and be asked to be sent back to their country because Putin lied to them that they were going to be on military maneuvers. And then when they got to the uh, line between Ukraine and Russia, they were told what the plan was. So there is a disheartening thing uh, how big it is, I don't know, in, in the Russian military. Hopefully that will begin spreading, and hopefully uh, the soldiers will begin paying attention if they can get the, uh, uh, the communication uh, with the, what the people in Russia itself are saying. This is totally, totally, totally ridiculous. Uh, I mean, it's stupid. Uh, uh, you know, well, Putin you- just... He misplanned. He was overly optimistic. I want to point something out to you, Olo. Uh, one of the problems uh, in Ukraine was caused by uh, Donald Trump. Donald, Tr- the Congress had sent an authorization to Trump to give foodstuffs to the Ur- Ukrainian people. And he was then having his first trial. And uh, he was mad at Ukraine for not lying for him, and he did not sign that authorization, which is a lot of money for Ukraine to help itself in terms of feeding its people and supporting its government. So the seeds of this uh, go back to the Trump administration, 
Uh, but frankly, they go back even further. Uh, the Allies uh, asked, demanded Ukraine give up its nuclear weapons years ago. But they did not put them in uh, NATO. If they had done that, we wouldn't have the situation today because we would be in there uh, uh, on the ground with aircraft because it would be NATO and we are allied to uh, defend all of the NATO uh, allies. But be that as it may, uh, this is a horrible situation. And whatever we do, we've just got to keep our good thoughts uh, for the Ukraine people and support them as much as we can in terms of the conversations so that American citizens begin to get even more upset with this thing and, and, and put pressure on our government. I don't know what the government can do since Joe Biden has said no boots on the ground, but there must be a few things left that we can do. Although we are providing a lot of uh, munitions and arms, uh, possibly we can speed that up. Uh, possibly we can whisper in China's ear, give us a hand here. China's economy is going to get hit as much as any other economy. They're the, I guess, second largest economy in the world. And they sell a lot of products and they buy a lot of products. So this thing is, nobody wants this thing. And indic indicative of that, all of the nations that had formerly been Russia's allies who basically come out and said they're against this. There's no reason for this. Uh, I believe two oligarchs, uh, Russian oligarchs, you know, the billionaires, they've told Putin to stop this because it's ruining their free ride. They've got a lot of money. Uh, uh, they milk the economy, and, and this guy is going to kill it. You know, one of the heartwarming things I did see uh, was uh, a Ukrainian was... Uh, traveling on a road and there were a couple of uh, Russian tanks that had run out of uh, out of gas and he stopped by and he started a conversation with them and he, he said to them what are you doing here and the soldiers three soldiers replied and uh, the translation was we don't know uh, why are you here we don't know uh, and it was a it was a friendly enough conversation um, the guy just drove on but it shows about the other side of war that um, the people that are that are doing the shooting uh, and uh, are are human as well, um, and uh, it's just it's just a you know I it's just a and and what's even worse is that with platforms like TikTok and Twitter and stuff like that, um, you are bombarded with 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 visuals that you never got before, that you never got before. Uh, and it's 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 just hard to look at. Getting back to China, uh, for a second, I think China is upset uh, with Russia, even though they want to team with Russia and pair with Russia uh, to to combat the United States. Is what does China do now with Taiwan? Okay, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Russia. What Russia has done uh, has I, I I'm. I'm sure, as anything, has put on hold whatever China was going to do with Taiwan simply because now, in a worldwide stance, China can't do what they wanted to what they want to do, which is basically eventually try to take back Taiwan. Uh, it, it had to foul up a lot of things in China other than the economy, mainly uh, how they deal with Taiwan. That's an excellent point. Uh, and the difficulty for China now is that Taiwan, which we in America have been supporting uh, for many, many years, and they have uh, lots of uh, uh, military, lots of uh, armaments, and we stand by them. But uh, this thing with uh, Ukraine is going to make Taiwan say to the USA, hey, you know, we think we could use a little bit more of this ballistic stuff and cyber security, and so forth and so on. So it does make it very difficult for China. Uh, and it's a good thing on the one way, and we don't need any more fighting. But maybe, maybe they'll just say, okay, maybe we better stop the Russians before, one, they damage the whole world, and two, uh, 
uh, they get into everybody's mind. Well, you just can't run into a country and 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 kill the civilians. It's just a uh, and 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 now let's take a look at the, uh, the the worldwide economy, which was under a lot of pressures from COVID. And I'm not only talking about the American economy; I'm talking about the worldwide economy. Um, and it's going to get worse um, uh, because uh, you have big corporations uh, that are going to take advantage of the situation. But it's only going to get worse. And you you wonder uh, in Russia. Uh, there's been sanctions against Russia before, um, but things are so bad that Russia has turned over uh, their currency. They've they've backed their currency now with cryptocurrency uh, because they can't accept dollars uh, uh, the way it's set up. Uh, as bad as we have it here, and as bad as it's going to be in Europe and all over the world, uh, the Russian economy is really getting hammered. Well, you know, on crypto, um, uh, Bitcoin was up. Uh, I guess forty five hundred dollars in the last two days. Uh, we know, and we discussed it on the show. Uh, uh, the cryptocurrencies are used as a way to launder money, and uh, Russia has been doing its laundering uh, through major banks, Switzerland, and so forth. Uh, well, now they can't do that anymore. That their funds are frozen. In fact, it's very interesting. Japan. Uh, is also doing the same thing uh, in terms of uh, freezing their accounts. But the point is, it, if, it's, if the Russians are uh, using crypto, as you say, and I don't doubt it, and others are beginning to play that game as well, they might be in for a very, very sad awakening in that the federal government, our government, has been watching this uh, crypto thing very intensely uh, and part of what the, the goal is to figure out how to regulate it uh, to avoid this laundering problem uh, that is worldwide. If indeed the federal government were to say, hey, the Russians are playing this game with uh, crypto, uh, why aren't we why aren't we issuing sanctions against people trading in uh, the Bitcoin. Now, they can't find the names of people, but I'm certain they can do things to uh, force the people in, or the middlemen uh, to stop or to reveal names and so forth. Uh, so if you're, if you're not convinced that crypto is a pretty difficult thing, we, we spoke about it when it was about 65, and then it went to two days ago, 33. That's thousands of dollars. Uh now is not the time to uh, to waltz in. You know, I it's it's I know that uh, it's it's the fad now with people that have money, but you know you have a currency that is beholding to nobody that is not regulated by anybody. Uh, to me, it sets up as right now. Uh, nothing more than the, the scams uh, over the years uh, where you get in early, you make a lot of money, the people that get in late get killed. It's a, it's a pyramid scheme to me, a lot, except it's a worldwide pyramid scheme. Oh, man. <laughs> no question about it. I mean, uh, it's like some of those stocks, meme stocks, sometime last year when a lot of young investors decided that the uh, uh, they knew that uh, it was going to the sky. Well, eventually it, uh, it fell to the earth. Um, when something looks too good to be true, it's not true. And uh, you should approach investing in that fashion. Well, crypto is, is, is like pyramid, like it's, 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 there has to be a bottom. And you know that the, pre, the people that get in early uh, are the ones uh, that will make out. Uh, and even... Uh, and I just, uh, it's going to be interesting to see when we go through this next six month period because uh, even if the Russians get their way and they take over the cities, they're going to be involved in hand to hand combat throughout the Ukraine for a long, long time. It's going to be very interesting to see how cryptocurrency uh, matches up and goes uh, with, the, with the rest of the world, with the rest of the worldwide financial markets, Jim, because this, this thing in the Ukraine is not something that's going to be over in days. It might not even be over in months. Uh, uh, look what happened to us uh, in Afghanistan and look at what happened to all these other uh, in Vietnam. 
Vietnam. Uh, this is something that, that is going to go on for quite a long time, and it's going to affect the economy for quite a long time. I hope you're wrong, but I'm afraid you're probably right. I do want to point out, however, uh, if they take the cities or a city and they go in, the troops of Russia, uh, to uh, take over, maintain order, and so forth, they're in for a bloody, bloody yeah. time. Yeah. Because their Ukrainian spirit that we've seen is so incredible. You've got uh, kids with guns. You've got all the people. Uh, the former president, prior to this man, he's got a gun. He's out there. He's supporting the new president. On a lovely note, uh, uh, Ukraine had a world champion boxer at one time. Well, he's got his millions of dollars, but he's got his armor on and his gun. Uh, Miss Ukraine, uh, she is a picture on the, the two with a machine gun. She's out in the street. This is the kind of thing that the Russian troops are going to find very difficult. Once they get into the city, their big weapons are useless. They're great from five miles away. Well, you're, when you're in the city, you don't use one of these large, I'll call them cannons, uh, to do anything. Uh, so they're going to be, as you said just five seconds ago, hand-to-hand -hand fighting. It's at that point where we're going to see if the Russian army has the metal to, to do that kind of fighting. Uh, it's, it's very difficult for anybody, but if indeed enough of these soldiers feel misguided, their appetite for hand-to-hand -hand comment or, or going around the corner and getting shot at uh, is, is going to dissipate very, very quickly. All right. Well, with that being said, Jim, we're out of time. Hopefully we'll have better things to talk about next week. Amen, brother. And let's send everybody in Ukraine and throughout the uh, European Center a lot of light and love and prayers. You have a good day. See you. Take care, Jim. Uh, Jim Lynch, and cover your assets this morning here on The Breakfast Club on Robin Hood Radio.